Bruce Morton has a report now for us from the Manned Spacecraft Center in Houston. Bruce? Walter, uh, Leo Krupp was talking a few moments ago about the efforts here to uh, work out alternate solutions in the simulators. We went so foggy outside you could see the cars heading into mission control, astronauts, uh, trajectory analysts, uh, everyone coming in uh, as soon as he heard the word. And in fact, the Apollo 13 backup crew, we learn, is now in the simulator, checking out some of these possibilities that are being considered. Among them, of course, Kematic, the man who was to have made the trip. Uh, we've been talking here with some of the people from Pratt & Whitney who make the fuel cells. They are as baffled as everyone else by what happened. Uh, people mention explosion, people mention meteorite. Uh, the Pratt & Whitney engineers uh, say they just don't understand what went wrong with the system. They uh, can't find anything that points to a malfunction in the fuel cell itself, but they, uh, they don't really have any other explanation either. Uh, Vice President Agnew, who was to have made a visit here tomorrow, has canceled that now. Uh, presumably on the theory that this is an emergency, that everybody's working hard, and it really isn't the day for a ceremonial kind of visit. Uh, one other argument against the Atlantic landing that's being made here, uh, counting back, uh, or up, I should say, through ground elapsed time, uh, if they go for the Atlantic, it comes out uh, to about 133 hours into the flight, which is about 3 in the morning Eastern Standard Time which means they'd be coming down in a part of the Atlantic where probably there won't be any ships waiting for them. And uh, they have to do it at night, which makes, uh, obviously, a landing that much more difficult. They can't see where they're going well, and uh, the aircraft, the ships uh, that are looking for them, have a hard time spotting them. There are two C-130 aircraft on Ascension Island, which would be out uh, up in case of an Atlantic landing, but uh, doing it at night would certainly make it a whole lot tougher, and obviously NASA would prefer to wait for the Pacific. I should add just one note about the families. Uh, Mrs. Lovell is at home with her children, all of them up, all of them listening to the air-to-ground conversation, which is always, as you know, piped into the astronauts' homes. Uh, Mrs. Fred Hayes is home, too. She's had some expert advice about what's going on from two astronaut guests, Neil Armstrong and Alan Bean. Walter? Uh, that... Uh uh, Jack Swigert's parents, you know, he is a bachelor, one of the three in the space program. Interestingly enough, Ken Mattingly, the man whose position he took in the last uh, day before the flight because of Mattingly's exposure to German measles, was Swigert's parents out in uh, Denver uh, heard the news tonight and reported that they were very worried, that they were stunned by the news. But uh, they, according to a NASA spokesman who rushed to their house shortly after the news came through, said they're taking it very well. They realize that there's a problem and that everything possible is being done for the crew's safety. Do you have to uh, do a manual takeover? Turn the engine gimbal off? Mode control to attitude hold? And use the, hand, use the TTCA? Roger. 